you're not getting all the news. There are things going on in the Miami news that you can't find anywhere else. It's Miami's other voice, succinct, compelling, provocative, opinionated, informative, entertaining, stimulating. Keep up with the news. Get all the news. Get the Miami news. Channel 4 wants to help you see the greatest show on earth. It's the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus at the Miami Beach Convention Center, Wednesday, January 20th through Tuesday, February 2nd. Channel 4 is sponsoring opening night, Wednesday, January 20th. Save $3 off the regular price of every ticket in the house. Plus, help Channel 4 donate opening night proceeds to Boys Town of Florida. Call 673-9046 in Dade or 523-8777 in Broward for ticket information. Come to Channel 4's Family Night at the Circus. Monday's an important date for the Florida legislature as it gets to work early with pressing matters that will affect you. Join me live from the state capitol via satellite Monday night at 6. The Gals at the Gridiron, 7.30 Monday. News Weekend, Update 4. Now here's Bob Mayer. Good evening, everybody. Miami's Latin community is tense but quiet tonight in the wake of nine hours of disturbances yesterday that resulted in the arrest of 34 protesters. The violence, spurred by the deportation of a Cuban stowaway on Friday, prompted an emergency session of the Miami Commission. Pam Salsby has a report. There was standing room only tonight at Miami City Hall. This emergency commission meeting was called in an attempt to defuse mounting hostility in Dade's Latin community. Commissioners passed a series of resolutions, what they called possible solutions to last night's confrontation between Latin protesters and police. 21 people were arrested after a round of rock and bottle throwing. The violence reportedly started when a march to the Dade County Jail was halted by an open bridge. Officers used tear gas to disperse the crowd. And at tonight's meeting, the commission unanimously agreed that a full investigation of the Miami Police Department must be conducted. There are bad apples in every group. For the most part, I think we have a department that we could be proud of. We have a police department that has gone through more than any other police department in the country. And part of the city's plan to keep order was to adopt three major resolutions. Appoint a special citizens panel to look into last night's confrontation. Send a telegram to the Justice Department asking it to conduct a separate investigation. And send a telegram to President Reagan condemning the Immigration Department's deportation policy. Concerned Miami residents were then given a chance to air their grievances. Six officers surrounded me, and they did not speak, and I told them, I live there, that's my house. They did not care. They just dragged me into the van, and then they put some uh, plastic handcuffs, and I still have the marks on my right hand that you could, you could see they're still there, and this part is still numb. If it is an isolated incident, what occurred last night, then it is just lamentable, but we can build from that. However, what does worry us is that perhaps it wasn't an isolated incident. What was perhaps behind the city of Miami police, we want, it, we want that investigated. And that's what Miami Police Chief Kenneth Harm says he intends to do. Earlier today, Chief Harm held a news conference with reporters and leaders of the Latin community. We stand ready, the Miami Police Department, stand ready to investigate any and all allegations of brutality. Unfortunately, in this kind of a situation, frequently, rumors start circulating about the police did this or the police did that. That's very difficult to deal with unsubstantiated rumors. Harm says he believes today's announcements by his department and the city commission have helped to bring calm to the Latin community. Officers are still on standby, however, just in case. Pam Salsby, Channel 4 News. Almost completely overlooked in the commotion over Friday's return to Cuba of a young stowaway is the fact that a two-year court battle over the custody of 16-year-old Odalis Valdez has quietly come to an end, and the girl will remain in Miami. She originally came to the United States quite by accident. She was a passenger aboard a ferry boat that was hijacked here from Havana. After her arrival, Mrs. Valdez decided she wanted to stay, at which point her parents, her father, an official of the Cuban Communist Party, filed suit for her return and $2 million in damages. That suit has now been withdrawn. It was a long trip back home for Bernard Sansarik, the Fort Lauderdale man who failed last weekend in an attempt to lead an overthrow of the Haitian government. Sansarik returned to South Florida today under arrest. Al Sunshine has details. 
What started last weekend as an attempt to invade Haiti ended at Miami Beach's Coast Guard base this morning. 25 Haitians were returned to the U.S. by the Coast Guard after they were picked up and arrested near Haiti on Thursday aboard their leaking boat, which later sank. Their leader, identified as Broward County gas station owner Bernard Sensric, was among those in handcuffs. The Coast Guard reports they found several rifles, pistols, and explosives on board, as well as more than one dozen pipe bombs. Security was very tight at the Beach Coast Guard base. Local Haitian exiles cheered the return of the ill-fated invasion force members as if they were heroes. An armed guard stood watch over the base to keep some 100 Haitian exiles off the Coast Guard property. The invasion force members will be questioned by federal agents, and its leader will be charged with violating U.S. neutrality laws. Charges have been uh, authorized by the United States Attorney today on uh, Mr. Sansarik for violations of neutrality statutes. And the other uh, 25 uh, so individuals, there have been uh, material witness warrants uh, brought against them. Bernard Sansarik will appear before a U.S. magistrate tomorrow. The other members of the invasion force will be detained for further questioning by federal authorities and may face deportation. Police feared a possible disturbance from the waiting Haitian exiles, but federal agents moved quickly off the base without incident. The FBI says it's still investigating the invasion attempt, and the case is not closed. Al Sunshine, Channel 4 News. A freak windstorm rips through Boulder, Colorado. We'll have a tape report coming up. Heading home now, Mr. Brock? Well, unless you're buying dinner, Fred. Welcome you home with Heidi Homestyle Cooking. See you, Fred. Good night. Welcome you home with Green Giant. Green Giant means hearty cooking, like new steak and green peppers with fluffy rice and savory sauce. Good hearty homestyle cooking. Bad day? Not anymore. Welcome you home with hearty homestyle cooking. Welcome you home with Green Giant. If you have a ticket to New York or Washington on any airline but Pan Am, all it's going to get you is to New York or Washington. But if you fly Pan Am, you'll also get one of these, a coupon worth up to $2,500. It lets you take someone in your family free to any of 13 countries or around the world. So only two choices make sense. You can buy your tickets to New York or Washington on Pan Am or switch to Pan Am. Anything else is worth up to $2,500 less. I've 10 seconds to tell you where you'll find the best prices on Toyotas during Toyota's Priceathon. Hmm. Need I say more? That's what I buy at Haddock for is the meat. Hans, Jumbo Franks are a mouthful of meat. <laughs> great meat makes great Jumbo Franks. Depend on cons. The worst winter of the century continues its onslaught. Howling winds gusting to an incredible 136 miles an hour tore through Boulder, Colorado today, damaging 40% of the homes and businesses there and injuring more than a dozen persons. We have a report from Bill Britt at KBTV in Denver. Well, as it was early this morning, high winds continue to blast through Boulder. Get down to telephone poles closed a seven-block stretch of 30th Street from Colorado Avenue to Arapahoe. Some of the poles had snapped at mid-length. Emergency squad personnel found it difficult to stand as they directed traffic. Damaged areas were dotted all across town. Signs were smashed, scaffolding ripped from the sides of buildings, and downed trees were scattered in many places. At Boulder Municipal Airport, planes had flipped into the air as if they were toys coming to rest like helpless animals on their backs. At least half of the dozen or so planes that were tossed in the wind were completely destroyed, including this one, which came to rest against an airport office building. Several plane owners say they are just thankful they are insured. Bought it wrecked last year from the wind and uh, rebuilt it last summer. And looks like I start over again. <laughs> The hardest hit section of Boulder was the Table Mesa area. The roof from this house flew over the home next door, but sliced off the sidewall of an adjacent house before smashing into another home. It just uh, seemed like the winds were more swirling and uh, they were really gusting. And what, what kind of damage did you suffer? Well, you can see my house and the car totaled out. In the house where the roof had been ripped away, the Sage family salvaged what they could as the walls vibrated around them. Bob Sage, his wife and son, had gone to bed, but they were wide awake when the wind struck. 
It was blowing awfully hard, and the house was shaking and vibrating, and it was uh, not unusual, but uh, all of a sudden there was this loud ripping noise, and the room filled with uh, wind and dust, and uh, I looked up, and there was the stars. I looked at the rest, and they were all gone, so we went downstairs in the bedroom we have downstairs, and that seemed pretty secure, and uh, so we spent the night there. With the Dorothy Sage told us our house always had the best view in town, and now we have a little more of it. New low temperatures were recorded in Ohio, Wisconsin, and New York. In Isabella, Minnesota, the mercury plunged to 48 degrees below zero. It was so cold in Washington, D.C., 5 degrees below zero, that efforts to recover more bodies and aircraft parts from Wednesday's Air Florida crash into the Potomac River had to be abandoned. Divers gave up when their underwater breathing equipment froze. The Florida legislature convenes in Tallahassee tomorrow, meeting in a rare January session so that the reapportioning of the legislative and congressional districts can be accomplished by the summer when qualifying begins for the fall elections. Capitol Bureau Chief Jerry Cohen takes a look at how reapportionment is and how it might be. Each resident in the northern Florida city of Quincy looks to this one man for representation in Florida's house, while each resident in Dade and Broward County can call as many as six lawmakers their representative. Doesn't sound like the one man, one vote principle is working, does it? Single member districts should change that and increase minority representation. A look at Dade County's newly proposed districts for the House and Senate does just that. Representative Barry Cooten drew the lines for Dade. I have seven predominantly Latin groups and three predominantly black groups. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's fairly difficult if you're doing do a single member plan that you're not going to have that kind of a makeup because 35% of Dade County is Latin today and 15 to 17% is black. And you're going to come out with some very strong minority districts. Senate Dean Dempsey Barron unveiled the Senate plan last Friday. In Dade County, we have where we have seven senators. We have one entirely black district with a population of blacks in that district of 54 percent. With Barron's plan, the first black senator in Florida's history could conceivably be elected. Jerry Cohen, Channel 4 News, Tallahassee. A squad of some 150 anti-terrorist groups in Madrid, Spain early today freed the father of Miami Beach superstar singer Julio Iglesias and arrested his four kidnappers. Dr. Julio Iglesias Puga is 66 years old. He was described as exhausted after 19 days as a captive, but otherwise unhurt. Well, the Super Bowl may not be scheduled until next weekend, but for those partaking in a Jewish fundraising drive today, this was Super Sunday. A phonathon sponsored by the Jewish Federation attracted more than 2,000 volunteers to the Temple Israel Phone Drive headquarters. Among them, Governor Graham, who made a few phone calls of his own in the Federation's effort to raise money for a variety of Jewish causes, from feeding the elderly to helping the needy in Israel. The calling will go on, or went on rather, until 9 tonight, but already the drive netted more than $1,035,000. Chris Myers will have all of the Sunday sports right after this. Today you see more people everywhere drinking white wine. But if you're like me, there are a lot of times when you want something with a little more taste than white wine. Like before lunch, or dinner, or right now. That's when I drink Dry Sack Sherry. It has extra body and flavor. And Dry Sack really stands up to ice. So when you want something a little more satisfying than wine, have Dry Sack on the rocks. It's what a lot of wine drinkers drink when they want a little more than white wine. Imported by Judas Wild Sons. Denny's creates our ultimate omelet. We cut and chop and slice and mince and dice and grill and crack and stir and mix and melt and pour and stuff and top and serve. All for the special price this month of only $2.79. Our ultimate omelet, only at Denny's, where you'll like our prices and you'll love our food. It's a car. It's a truck. It drives like a car. It hauls like a truck. It's Rampage, America's first sports pickup. Order it at your Dodge dealer now.
some big bucks were on the line in tennis tonight. Long game. In New York, yeah, it was. <laughs> so long we got knocked out early. Vitis Karolaitis, Bob, who's had a history of not winning the big one and not having the character when he needed it, lived up to all that today on the Volvo Masters as Yvonne Lendl came from behind to beat Karolaitis for the title $100,000. The five-set championship that knocked off our early show turned when Lendl was down two sets and fought back to win a tiebreaker in the third set. That it was his match the rest of the way. Scoring went easily 6 7, 2 6, 7 6. That was the key 6 2 and then 6 4. On the women's tennis scene, Barbara Potter beat Coral Gables Bettina Bungie 4 6 and 7 6 to win the Avon tournament in Cincinnati. On the local side of tennis, the two day Intercontinental Pro Celebrity Tournament concluded at Bonaventure in West Broward. The tournament benefited the City of Hope Cancer Research and Treatment Center in California. This afternoon, host pro Brian Godfrey played an exhibition match with Vince Van Patten, and Godfrey won it by the score of 6-3 and 6-2. Quite a finish at the Bob Hope Desert Classic Golf Tournament today. Tom Kite and Ed Fiore had to go to a sudden death playoff to decide it. Both birdied the first extra hole, and on the second, Kite was within five feet for a birdie, Fiore 35 feet away. Looked like Kite was going to win it, but watch this. Fiore calmly rolls in his 35-footer for a bird, and suddenly, Kite's five-footer was stretched about 20 feet. And wouldn't you know it, Kite missed his putt, so as it goes, Fiore went on to win it. And as if things aren't going bad enough for the Philadelphia 76ers, they not only lost their third straight game today, but they also lost starting center Daryl Dawkins for about eight weeks as he suffered a shin bone fracture. In New Jersey today, the Nets, who got a 29-point performance from former Nick Ray Williams, beat the Sixers 105-97. Williams' scoring kept the game close until halftime, and then Philly got sloppy, and Buck Williams helped out, scoring 19. Albert King had 14, and the Sixers, who couldn't get close, got 25 points from Julius Irving, but obviously it wasn't enough. Elsewhere in the NBA today, the Lakers were 12 better than Kansas City. Washington took a decision over the Hawks. Indiana by 13 over the Bulls. Golden State blew out Seattle 122 to 97. Detroit by five over the Bucks and a half-timer, a scoring affair. San Diego leads Denver by five. Now in college basketball, eighth rank Georgetown was in trouble in the Carrier Dome, but Big Pat Ewing sunk a basket to get his team within one of Syracuse. But Orange men forward Tony Bruin slammed the door with a steal and a dunk following a pair of free throws, and Syracuse had a big five-point lead. They held on to win 75-70, snapping a 13-game Hoya winning streak. In St. Louis, the Louisville Cardinals jumped out in front of third-ranked Missouri early in the game, but the Tigers' Marvin Moon McCrary followed up a 20-all tie with a pair of jump shots, and his team was off and running. McCrary finished with 11. Michael Walker, who came off the bench, poured in 14 as he scored from underneath and off the fast break following the steal of a bad pass. Ricky Frazier was the high man of the game with 22 as Missouri won their 14th straight, and they remain unbeaten. In a couple of other college games today, second-ranked Virginia, an easy 89-68 winner over Clemson. We have no report on that San Francisco contest. Out at Miami Marine Stadium this afternoon, Danny Mang drove the crazy horse to victory in the Mike Gordon 100. Mang, who both holds the world straightaway record, blew an engine in the first heat, and then he put in a new one, and then averaged nearly 87 miles per hour over 39 laps he went on to win. Now, Duff Daly, who had won this event nine of the 11 years that it has been run, was leading most of the way but he broke down late and ended up finishing second. Well, after team owner Gene Autry met with free agent Reggie Jackson, he said that the Angels have a very good chance to sign the veteran outfielder. Autry said that the two agreed and got along very well, plus Reggie said that he wants to get the signing ordeal over with in a hurry. The University of Miami swimming team got back on the winning track today, scoring a 74-40 win over South Carolina. The Canes are 2-1 and one on the year. On the ice in hockey tonight, a tie with the Islanders and Caps. It was the Flyers ripping Boston Buffalo over Hartford easily. Another tie with Edmonton and Detroit at 4-0. That's the final. Minnesota outscored the Blackhawks 7-5. Third period, Quebec leading. Second period scores both of these. Colorado leads Calgary, and Pittsburgh is shutting out Vancouver. And Bob, that's sports. You have a good Monday. You too. Two court trials coming up tomorrow are worth mentioning here tonight. A circuit court jury in West Palm Beach will hear closing arguments and will begin deliberating in the corruption trial of suspended Palm Beach County property appraiser David Reed. One charge, official misconduct, was thrown out yesterday, leaving nine other charges to be decided. And here in Dade County tomorrow, brothers Randy and Rodney Bonvillian go on trial for beating a young man to death and raping his girlfriend and leaving her to die in the Florida Keys. The unusual aspect of the case is that it all happened in March of 1979, nearly three years ago. And the suspects are just being brought to trial.
The South Florida cold wave that didn't make it. Phil Whitelaw has that good news after this. Yuck! That's a big club for a drain cleaner. Try to improve liquid Drano. I know liquid Drano's strong, but that's a big club. I said Drano's new with stronger formula oxide three. Stronger? More clog busting power than before. Just pour in the power. No leading liquid works better. Think you're gonna be fine. Thanks to Drano. Six don't talk. Try new improved liquid Drano with more clog busting power. Wags is a wonderful way with dinners. Like the way we tend to cook our spaghetti and top it with zesty meat sauce. Smother our grilled liver with sweet sauteed onions. Deep fry our shrimp to a toasty golden brown. Even fresh bake our very own biscuits. At Wags, the good choice goes on and on. When you're ready for dinner, Wags has a great dinner ready for you. No wonder folks love Wags. Isn't it time you saw America from a different point of view? Something about a train that's magic. There's something about a train that's magic. Something about a train that's magic. If you want to see how beautiful America really is, see it at sea level. America is getting into trains. Train in the over most of the country, and yet in South Florida, it's like we're isolated from the rest of the country. It's so beautiful here. What, what gives? <laughs> well, as I mentioned last night, uh, at least I think I mentioned, did I mention last night the uh, front looked like as it was coming here, it was just kind of washing out. The trough was kind of filling in. It was losing its identity as a sharp, cold front, and the cold air behind it really didn't establish itself in South Florida. It passed to the north of us out in the Atlantic. Now, we got a nice wind shift off the warm waters today, and it took our temperatures up about 8 degrees higher than we thought they would be. I wish I could take credit for that. Let's take a look at what it is right now. We have 64 in Miami, 70 on the beach, 62 Fort Lauderdale, 59 up there in Palm Beach. Barometer at a good high reading already, still rising 30.23. Humidity 75%, and excuse me, winds are out of the east, northeast at seven miles per hour and a surf temperature 71 degrees. All right, as I mentioned, eight degrees warmer today than expected. That front just didn't have that kind of real sharp identity to it when it went through kind of washed out. As a matter of fact, the satellite picture shows that very vividly today, late afternoon hours. There it is. Just the feathers of it were just kind of disappearing as it moved off the end of the pier at Key Largo. If they have a pier down there in Key Largo, I assume they do. So it cleared, and we had lots of sunshine. Winds began to shift around to the uh, southeast and warmed us up very nicely. A lot of drama out west, I guess you've heard about if you're watching the news earlier. Some very strong winds. Let's take a look at our national map. We have a very steep pressure gradient between the system to the east and to the west. And so right off the high that was most of the day down around Arizona, uh, very strong winds were traveling through northern Colorado along with the Chinook effect. They had 135 mile an hour winds in the canyons up northwest of Denver, Colorado, 100 mile an hour winds around Boulder, Colorado, and that did some property damage, as we saw. That's settling down now. It's still out there, but a little more gentle winds. A new system approaching from the west is going to spread some rain into that area. Uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact. <clears throat> in the east, here's what our friends up north had to suffer through again this morning, some more record-breaking cold. It's hoped that it's the, the last of these big Arctic blasts for a while anyway, and there are signs because of the correction of the uh, jet stream that it is about the last one, maybe one more this season. But six below in Allentown, Pennsylvania. These are records for the day rather than all-time records. 11 in Charleston, West Virginia, 11 in Detroit, 23 in Chicago. That's for the date. Uh, the all-time record was set just last Monday at 26 below, 37 below up there in uh, Duluth, Minnesota. They had 45 below, not a windshield, a real temperature, 45 below in Hibbing, Minnesota, International Falls, and our readings of 76 down here in Fort Lauderdale, Miami, were the highs.
today around the country. All right, tomorrow we'll see that push of the front up and it'll become mostly stationary from the Atlantic to a low that's not going to be very active over there in the central part of the country, not much moisture available to it. So the temperatures will be a little bit more livable up there in the uh, northeastern part of the country, generally in the teens behind the high that's up there. And then we'll be into the 40s down here in contrast to that one below in Birmingham, Alabama this morning. And mostly sunny skies. I say not a lot of moisture yet getting up into that system. So clear and a little more mild in the eastern part of the country. Around Florida, after a, perhaps a frost up in the peninsula tonight and the rest of the uh, state doing pretty well, tomorrow's temperatures, lots of sunshine will be in the 50s up in the peninsula or up in the uh, panhandle, 60s in the central part of the state, 70s down here in the southeast, maybe getting close to 80 here. Forecast, fair and mild, right through Tuesday, as a matter of fact. We may be warmer than normal for the next week or so. We'll have a high tomorrow of about 77 after an overnight low, just a little below 60, especially in the inland areas. And seas 3 to 5 feet with those east-southeast winds, 10 to 15. There'll be a light to moderate chop in the inland bays. Not too bad. I think we're going to have a nice week ahead. Looks that way. Thank you, Phil. If there is to be good news about the nation's economy, it won't be coming in the next week. Alan Mendelson tells us why in the Business Week in advance. Reaganomics could be facing a head-on collision with reality. The Conference Board of Business Research Group tomorrow morning releases a report that says the Reagan Economic Recovery Program could be severely strained by huge budget deficits, high interest rates, and recession. How tough the economy is will be made clear this coming week. On Tuesday, the Commerce Department is likely to report another slow month for housing construction during December. Last month, houses were being built at a rate of about 900,000 a year, or about half of what's normal. Weak housing business and the continuing two-year slump in the auto industry will pull down the report on the gross national product that will be released Wednesday. The GNP measures the size of the economy. All the construction, all the factory work, all the goods and services sold in stores and offices. Wednesday's report is for the last three months of 1981. At the end of the week, the final report on 1981 inflation will be released. That report will be the December Consumer Price Index, and it should show inflation well below the double-digit range. Alan Mendelson, Channel 4 News. The presence of a Soviet trawler in the waters off Florida, about 50 miles east of Cape Canaveral, caused a one-hour delay today in the test firing of a missile from a submerged submarine. After the trawler was chased away, the missile with a dummy warhead was fired from the USS Ohio new breed of Trident submarine that cost more than one billion dollars. And that completes update four of Channel 4's News Weekend. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Maxi Thins? How can a thin pad replace my thick pad? Maxi Thins? Why should I switch from my thick pads to these thin pads? because they're an alternative to Maxi Pads. Maxi Thins, new from Jampex. With Maxi Thins' unique construction, you get a thick pad protection product with thin pad comfort. They're folded twice and individually wrapped so you can even hold one in your hand. They're an alternative to Maxi Pads. New Maxi Thins. Association. 27-year-old Mike Swearingen has placed second so far for the title of all-around champion cowboy. He's been competing for a dozen years, but made rodeoing his profession just four years ago. It's a lot of fun. You know, you get to meet a lot of different people, and it's, I don't have a boss. I'm my own boss. If I want to go to a rodeo, I go. If I want to stay home and go hunting, I stay home, you know, whatever I want to do. But I had a boss for a long time, and, you know, he's a great guy and everything, but it just seemed like everything I did, I wasn't getting anywhere. 25-year-old Dave Moody is the front runner for the all-around title for the second time. But when riding the rodeo circuit, anything can happen, and injuries are a part of the life. I've had both legs broke, my arms broke about three times a piece. Uh, you know, it's pretty rough. Why go through all that? Well, it's something that I like to do. I mean, if you, if you like to do it, that's what you need to do. More often than not, the cowboy gets up and walks away, with the most serious injuries being to his score and his pride. For the cowboy, it means freedom. And for the spectator, the rodeo is an exciting way to spend the afternoon. Karen Nash, Channel 4 News, Davey. And that's it for Update 2 of Channel 4's News Weekend. The late movie Dream House is next. Thank you for joining us. We'll all be back tomorrow night at 11. Good night.
This diesel engine is what makes the Volkswagen Rabbit and Pickup the best mileage 81 car and truck in America. Right now, make your best deal on either one, and Volkswagen of America will mail you a check for the suggested retail price of the diesel engine option. So you can save hundreds of dollars now and hundreds of dollars a year on fuel down...